Hi there. It's December of 2013 and winter weekends are a good time to stay home, relax, and spend the day slow cooking a pot for dinner. As a born and bred New Englander, I feel there are a few dishes better for slow cooking than our traditional Boston baked beans. However, I was in the mood to try something different and I wondered what else would be good for slow cooking on a Saturday. And that, of course, led to one of my favorite cuts of meat, beef brisket. Brisket, of course, uh, also needs to be cooked low and slow in order to keep from drying out and make it so tender it falls apart on your fork. So, why not combine beef brisket with Boston baked beans and see what happens? We start, of course, with beans. Great northern beans, to be precise, though you can use navy beans as well. Cover the beans with water and let them soak overnight on your counter. Uh, don't put the beans in the refrigerator because they won't absorb as much water and they won't soften. Next, we prepare the sauce for Boston baked beans. I like to use tomato paste rather than ketchup. We're making a double-sized batch in order to coat the brisket as well as flavor the beans. So, to the tomato paste, we add two-thirds of a cup of molasses, ground sugar, kosher salt, ground black pepper, ground mustard, sugar, vinegar, and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I found this makes a decent barbecue sauce as well. And now for the brisket. This is a five pound flat cut and we're coating it with the baked bean sauce. After coating one side, we flip it and cut a few slits into the fat cap so the marinade will soak through and into the meat. Then we cover it and place it in the refrigerator so it can marinate and tenderize overnight. The next morning it's now time to get down to the business of slow cooking the beans and brisket. After preheating the oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, we prepared diced onion and sliced bacon. This is homemade slab bacon that I'd made previously, but everyday bacon will work just fine here. Now we get to break out the cast iron. In a heavy cast iron skillet, we render the fat from the bacon and caramelize the onions. And next, we get to create a thing of beauty, if I may say so. The brisket has been marinating in sauce all night, and now we sear it in the hot iron pan. This is to give a tasty crust to the meat. Believe me, the look and the aroma of, of the searing beef is worth the effort it takes to do this. And then, of course, we deglaze the pan. This is a good excuse to crack open a bottle of Killian's Irish Red. Mix in the deglazed fond with our bacon and onions. Now we're ready to prepare the beans. We have a big cast iron bean pot to use here because this is going to be a big meal. The beans make a good layer for the bottom of the pot as we mix it all in. Add the bacon and onions to the beans, then add the rest of the bean sauce and mix it all together. Now we're ready to bake a pot of beans. 
On top of all this, we add the brisket. And finally, for some braising liquid, we pour in the rest of the Killian's Irish Red. However, at this point, I ran into an unexpected problem. The heavy pot full of food was too heavy to fit on the oven rack. So, we improvise a solution with steel plumbing pipe and a cast iron pizza pan. And this is where the slow cooking begins. We let this pot cook in the oven all day for a full 12 hours. Of course, that gives plenty of time to prepare a special side dish for dinner. Old-fashioned New England brown bread. And now, at last. After slow cooking in a cast iron pot for 12 hours, we are ready to reveal the finished brisket. And so, we have this. This is Boston Baked Brisket. And how tender is it after cooking all day? See for yourself. Oh, the brisket simply comes apart, and the taste of the baked beans is out of this world. This is cast iron slow cooking at its best, and I highly recommend you give this a try. Thank you very much for watching.